Hey pickleball friends, are you confused about the service rules? Is yours legal? Are your opponent's serves legal? Let's clear up all the service questions you might have today. So in today's modern pickleball, the service rules are very confusing and complicated. Back when the game was invented in 1965 and many, 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 many years after, the only rules you really had to be concerned about was contact below your waist. That was it. Let's talk about today's rules. So here's the first change you need to be aware of in today's modern day rules of pickleball. Contact must be made below the belly button rather than the waist. The waist is defined as the belly button. Well, I'm going to put this piece of tape right on my belly button there. So that's where contact must be made below that. The old days it would have been the waist, which is if I put this right where my waist is, it's a little bit lower. Wow, I can serve a little bit from a higher position in today's rules. So the, another rule that has changed in the modern era of pickleball is when we serve, we have to have an upward arc. Our paddle must be in an upward motion. In the old days, didn't matter. All that mattered was contact below your waist. So another modern rule that we have in pickleball is the head of the paddle, no part of the head of that paddle, can it be above your wrist joint right here at impact. So now I'm going to model all the elements you need in today's rules in order to have a legal serve. So the first element I'm going to model for you is contact must be made below my belly button. Well, it's pretty easy to see here right now because I have my piece of tape marking my belly button. So here we go. Contact on the paddle has to be below my belly button. These are legal serves as far as that element goes. So now we're going to talk about the newer rules in the game that have kind of confused things. Let's try to make those as clear as we can. At impact, you have to have an upward arc. So you can see an arrow on this. So your paddle has to be going in an upward arc like this rather than a downward arc at impact. So now I'll model a serve that definitely has an upward arc at impact. Looks like this. The next modern day element of the serve service rules that can be confusing is the head of the paddle cannot be above your wrist joint at impact. Well, to make that easier, Let's put a piece of tape right there on my wrist joint. And now let's model a legal serve with contact. No part of this paddle can be above my wrist joint. Those are legal serves. Well, let's put it all together now. That reminds me of the Beatles song. I got my Beatles hat on all together now. But let's, I'm going to model all the things you need to do to have a legal serve. Well, one thing I didn't mention, but I just this shouldn't even have to mention, both feet do have to be behind the baseline. So let's do all the other elements together. Contact now will be below my belly button. No part of the head of the paddle can be above my wrist joint. And I have to have an upward arc. I'm going to do all three of those, I hope, in a legal fashion right here. I'm meeting all three of those elements, including, I guess you could say the fourth, both feet behind the service line. Okay, now that we understand all the elements we need in order to have a legal serve in today's modern rules, now we're gonna show you why I think these rules really are terrible. Now here's why I think today's rules are impossible to enforce. So the first rule we have, and this is actually the simplest is, contact must be made below the belly button. Well, I'll mark the belly button. But you know what? I have played in hundreds of tournaments and I've never played in a tournament where they hand out the belly button tape to know where your belly button is. Would you know where my belly button is without this piece of tape right here? I think it's pretty much a guess. 
So here's why that can even be confusing. Contact below my belly button. Well, yeah, we don't have belly button tape on. This serve would be legal. This would be illegal. When a person is serving very fast and your opponent's on the other side, the ref is way over there, very hard to detect if that is a legal serve or not. So the second rule that can be very confusing in today's modern pickleball service rules is that the arc of the paddle must be upward. Well, you can see, that's pretty easy to see. That's an upward arc, paddle going upward. That's a downward arc, easy. But the problem is what defines upward is one degree upward. So I'm just get, I, here, I don't even know holding this if I'm up to one degree upward or one degree downward. I'm assuming that's slightly upward. That would be legal. This would be illegal. Can you imagine trying to judge that at real speed? So now I'm going to hit some serves that some are probably legal, some are probably not. You be the judge which or which. It's going to be difficult. So the next element in today's modern service rules that can be very confusing is the head of the paddle cannot be above your wrist joint at impact, which is very difficult to see. This would be an illegal serve, even though I'm making contact below my waist, because part of the paddle is above my wrist. Even this would be illegal. Makes no sense, I'm not gaining an advantage. And then look at this, if I use a longer narrow paddle, the same the same serve would be legal because the paddle is narrower here. Does it make sense to have a certain paddle that would be legal and another one illegal even though you're doing everything the same? So the next element that is tricky to detect is if any portion of the head of the paddle is above your wrist at impact. So now I'm going to model some that I feel the head of the paddle slightly above my wrist and some that it's below my wrist. You be the judge, which are legal, which are illegal. Here we go. Okay, now I'm going to give you the perspective that your opponent sees when you're serving. Boy, it's really hard to tell if they're legal or not. Here we go. I'll throw in some legal, I'll throw in some illegal. Could you tell which ones were legal and which ones were illegal? I knew. Now for all you tournament players out there, let's look at the referee's perspective. They're the ones that have to determine if this is a legal or illegal serve in those matches. Here we go. Some are going to be legal, some are going to be illegal. Could you tell which ones were legal and which ones were illegal? So as you can see, today's modern pickleball service rules are not only very confusing, they're impossible to detect all of those elements simultaneously. Well, I have a solution. So here's what I'm proposing to make it much easier to determine if you have a legal or illegal serve. First off, let's go back to the way it used to be for over 40 years and 
all that mattered was contact below your waist. It didn't matter if you had an upward motion, a downward motion, or if a portion of the paddle was above your wrist joint. You can't see all those elements at once. Maybe though you can see the one element if contact is below your waist. So also what I'm proposing is to do what they've done in the sport of paddle tennis and pop tennis. It's the other sport where they serve below the waist into a service box and they're serving over a net. They allow you to either hit the ball out of the air like we do, but they're only concerned about contact below their waist, makes it simpler, or they also allow you to hit the ball off the bounce. I want to show you why that would be a foolproof way of always serving with a legal serve. So what I'm proposing is that you are also allowed to have a drop serve. That is, you could hold the ball wherever you want, even as high as you can reach, and drop the ball and hit it off the bounce. Watch what happens when I hold it up as high as I can reach. Watch how high the ball bounces. It will never ever bounce above my waist. So all the referee would have to look for is if I have a legal drop, which means just letting go of the ball. I can't pound it on the ground. But the ref would only have to look at that and he'd go, yep, it's going to be legal because it doesn't matter what I do after I've dropped the serve. Wouldn't matter. The other big advantage of a drop serve is teaching beginners, it's much easier to teach. I've been teaching this sport since the 80s. When you teach people, beginners, how to, how to hit ground strokes, teaching them how to bounce the ball, and by the way, if you've watched my other videos, good serves look just like your forehand. So drop the ball, you could hit it with downward motion, that's actually would today be an illegal serve because I had a downward motion, but who cares? Yes, it has backspin. We can hit backspin in every other shot in the game. So let's just also allow the drop serve. Another great thing about allowing the drop serve is for all those players that have a two-handed backhand, you could choose to have a two-handed backhand serve. Another good way to solve the yips if you happen to have the yips. So I'll do my drop, hit a two-handed backhand serve. So I put a video out about five years ago talking about my idea of the drop serve and there were really only two arguments against it and I'm going to sh show you why they're ridiculous. One of them was, well, if I drop the ball it might not bounce straight. Well, I can tell you right now I could drop about 5,000 of these and they're all going to drop straight enough for me to bounce, to hit on a serve. And if it doesn't, just catch it and do it over just like a tennis player when they have a bad toss. The other argument I've heard is, well, if I have to hit the ball off of a bounce, it's not going to bounce high enough, and I have bad knees, I'm old, I won't be able to get low enough. Well, when you hold the ball up as high as you can, by the way, it's never ever going to bounce higher than your waist, so it will always be legal, um, it bounces as high as a normal drive. Not difficult, you don't have to get down that low. Now, if, here's about net height, Somebody that hits me a good dink, that bounces way lower. I have to get those shots all the time in the game. So the argument of I'm going to have to bend too low is just not a very good argument. So I hope this video we put together explains the rules in a way that you can understand today's modern rules. But also, I hope that you understand how much it would be an improvement if we changed today's rules and allowed either continue to serve out of the air, but the only thing we're worried about is contact below the waist. And if we added, allowed you to hit the ball off the bounce. Wow, that would be the simplest thing for a referee to judge. That's the only thing they would have to worry about. Remember, a ball will never bounce higher than your waist, no matter how tall you are. Originally, when these rules changed to this kind of confusing idea, I think it was all to stop aggressive serves. Well, that didn't work because in today's day, we actually have the most aggressive serves out there. So since it didn't work and since it's confused things, made it impossible to detect. If you go on social media, once a week someone posts their video, is my serve legal, is it not legal? And people have arguments about it, watching it in slow motion. How can you possibly judge all these elements at real speed? So that's my opinion.